Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today... <sighs> yeah, today is a lesson in failure. I'm gonna show you how not to make a Pokeball. Because I screwed this thing up a lot along the way. But, along the way I did get it right, and I finally actually made a Pokeball. So, I'm gonna show you what to do, and honestly, what not to do. So, let's go ahead and get into this video. <laughs> Alright, so before we even get into this, I just wanted to give a shout out and give some credit to the YouTube channel Make Slash Do. Now, they make some awesome stuff and they do some awesome stuff. That that name was pretty, pretty on the nose. But there are some awesome people and I highly recommend you guys jumping over to their channel and just watching some of their videos because some of the projects they do, I mean, it's just beautiful. But one of their projects was this Pokeball, and they actually modeled this and designed it. Then they went ahead and 3D printed it and created it just like I did. <sighs> they didn't fail like I did. I messed up a bunch of stuff, but I got it along the way. So if you're interested in this 3D model, I will put a link to their website down below to where you can get this. And they have a list of all of the supplies as well. It's a beautiful file. It printed wonderfully. It was just all of the mess ups along the way were 100% me, not their stuff. So if you're interested in any kind of cosplay or any kind of just cool 3D printed projects, definitely check their channel out. And I'm going to have a link to all of their info down in the description for you. So starting from the beginning, I went ahead and went to the Make Do website. I bought this file, downloaded it, and I had to support it and 3D printed it in resin. So I was using my Epax hard resin on my Epax E10 3D printer. That all went pretty well. I had to reprint a couple pieces because I just didn't support them well enough. But other than that, I was like, okay, if that's the worst thing that happens, we are good. But it wasn't. So that brings me to my first big point of this entire video, is failures happen. You mess up and you'll screw up something. Like you'll have paint on your fingers and then grab the freaking white part of this and get silver all over it and have to start over. Not that that's a real example from this stupid ball, but yeah, it, it can happen. Not, not to me, but it did happen to me. I digress. You get mad, you get upset, and it just, it happens. Don't get too down on yourself. Sometimes it's best to just walk away from a project and come back the next day. Because I, let's just be honest, I did that a couple times in a couple days on this project. And that's the big thing. When you experience failures, just keep moving forward. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna quote my favorite fish, just keep swimming. Because that's really what it's about. As long as you learn from every single failure, you are going to be so much better in the end. So I've got everything I'm going to need already 3D printed. And I did this on my Epax 8K resin printer and using Epax hard resin gray. Now you can see there are a lot of support little marks and things like that that we're going to have to sand away because when I'm done with this, I am going to make this look like glass. So you can also see like the polygons because like this really did a high quality print job. So you can see all of those. And also this is the inner cage. You can see all of these marks, but all I have to do is just get a really nice sand job on all of this. And then I have these internal pieces. So these actually go in here like that and then this piece actually sits inside that. Then you can see here, it sits in like this. So we're gonna get all of this put together and sanded. So let's go ahead and move forward. What I'm gonna be doing first is I want to make sure that I get a nice flat surface because on some of this, with these support marks and stuff, like I gotta get them off. And all I'm going to be doing is taking this sheet of 220 sandpaper and just lay it here and in a circle motion, go around and get that flat first. Then I'm going to start sanding all of this and making it as smooth as I can. 
Now, the big thing when you're sanding these smooth surfaces, like these round surfaces like this, you want to make sure you're not staying in one place because then you can get flat spots. And that's the big thing here. So we really want to make sure we get all of this nice and smooth. Now, I am going to have to do a little puttying because I always get like a little hole on the very last layers. So, and you can see right there. But I'm going to get it good, good and sanded first, then we're going to move on to that. And same thing with this, I'm going to sand off all of these marks. Then we're going to start doing our test fits and make sure everything fits perfectly because in the end, this should all just fit beautifully together. And it doesn't fit really well right now just because we've got all of these marks right here and all of this. So these raised surfaces and these little edge marks aren't are keeping us from putting it together right. Now the big safety concern here is we are sanding resin. So always make sure you're wearing a respirator when you're sanding resin. And this is a dry sand right now. Later on, I'm probably going to be moving on to a wet sand. But the big thing is, is no matter how you're sanding this, you do not want to breathe this stuff in because it is not good for you. And the last thing you want is to get some lung problems due to your hobby. So always wear a respirator. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, so I have the Pokeball shells all done and I've got all of this nice and smooth. I just have to wipe it down and clean these really well. Now, there are some like scratches and things like that that showed up, but that's going to be perfectly fine because I, the primer that I'm going to be using will fill in all of those cracks and it will look beautiful when we're done. So we've got the shell done. Now it's time to move forward and start getting the little cage on the inside. And this is where we're gonna really be able to see like the perfect fit for this because already this is starting to fit a lot better, but we're gonna have to sand some of this and get all of these edges where the support marks are. So here we go. All right, so now I am done with all of the sanding and all of my pieces and parts have been washed because I wanted to get all of that dust out of there and make sure I have a nice clean surface for my primer. Now, when it comes to these two pieces, I am going to be priming them with a sandable fillable primer. And what I'm going to be doing there is getting a first good coat, then we will see about these holes. And after that, I'm going to be priming the rest of these pieces. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have everything primed and ready for the next step. And the next step is more sanding and processing. So the one thing I did is I went ahead and painted these black and this black, the cage. And I primed this white, even though a little bit of the paint got stuck on it when I flipped it. So it, I'm still going to paint it again. Not that big of a deal. Now, when it comes to the Pokeball shells... Now, I've got these shells, they are looking super smooth, but if you do notice, there's our hole. Our hole is right there, and it's on both of them. So, I have got to fill these holes in, and I knew that I was going to have to do that. But, when it comes to the actual, like, print and how it's sanded and how smooth everything looks, it is looking perfect. Now... If you do notice, I don't have it like perfect right here in the middle because remember, 
this thing is going to be covering up a vast majority of it. So I only sanded what I absolutely needed to. Because that's the key here. You don't want to do more work that is never going to be seen. So now we're going to take care of these little holes. And what I'm going to be using is this plastic wood putty. Now, if you've never seen me use this plastic wood filler, now the one thing that I do that's a little different than some people is I do not just put it right on my print. I'm going to go ahead and take this little medicine cup and I am going to take some of it out just a little bit. I don't need a lot for this. So that right there will cover up these two holes and then some. So I'm just going to cap this and seal it real good. Then I am just going to put in a few drips of water in here. And I'm just going to essentially thin this down a lot. So I am going to make this like a thin paste. And all I've got to do is just kind of keep mashing it into the water. And this is going to make it very thin and that way I can fill in all of these little gaps easily. All right, so once you have this really thinned out and what you're wanting to get is like almost like a, I don't even know what kind of consistency, like a thin milkshake kind of consistency, but you can see how like, how it actually is. Like it drips down real well and that is when I've got it. And I've tried to get rid of every little clump I can to really thin this stuff out. Now I'm just gonna take my coffee stir stick and literally just drip it on there and just kind of tap it and then that will get in the holes just perfectly for me. And that is literally it. So you can see that we made probably way too much but it will get in there and also I got a little dot right here too and I'm just gonna kind of tap it and get it how I need it to be. So it looks like I've got a little too much, so I'm gonna take my stir stick and just try to get some on the other end to take off some of that. But there we go. And that's it. So now I'm going to let this dry, this really thin stuff. And then after that, we're just gonna do a light sanding over top of everything. While the shell is drying, while that putty is drying, I'm going to go ahead and move on to these little inner rings. And what I'm going to be using is this Rust-Oleum Gold. And this is like a very shiny gold. And I was thinking about using some Rub and Buff, but the Rub and Buff just doesn't give me that like really bright, like reflective material, like that surface that I'm wanting. So we're going to use this. Now I'm going to take this over to the spray booth and just get a couple light coats because the key here to using this stuff is you want to be able to just have multiple very light coats because if not, you can get some running and things like that and it just won't look good. So you don't want to get the whole thing done in one shot. So let's move over to the spray booth and let's get started on this. All of the putty is nice and dry now, and when I was doing it, I also noticed there was a couple other little pieces that had nicks in it, so I went ahead and covered those up too. So I'm going to be using this 600 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to be lightly removing all of the, the extra putty. Now I'm not pushing hard, just kind of back and forth until it's all gone. Then I'm just going to have those little tiny nicks left. Once I'm done with that, then I am going to move up to a thousand grit and I'm going to sand the entire surface with this thousand grit and get it perfectly smooth. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to move up to this 2000 grit and I'm going to make sure everything is just beautiful with it. So let's go ahead and get started on this process.
All right, so I have these nice and sanded, and I mean, these feel like glass. I mean, they feel fantastic. So I've got these sanded really nicely, and I also got these sanded nice and smooth right here. Now, I have to paint everything now. Now, I'm going to be using my airbrush for the rest of this, and what I'm going to be using for the black cage, I'm going to be using my surface primer. Because I like how matte this actually turns out, and I want to just have that a nice matte black. So I'm going to go ahead and airbrush these cages with the surface primer. Then what I'm going to do for the top and bottom, I'm using this dragon red because it's a little bit of a darker red because I want it to look a little more real instead of like super cartoony than this dead white from uh, Vallejo Game Color. Now... When it comes to these little pieces, they are like almost like an emerald green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color shift and it is a little too bright and I'm going to mix in some of this hunter green to just darken this up a bit. Then I'm going to airbrush these. With the button, I'm just going to use the same color of this dead white. So we're going to go ahead, jump over to the spray booth and start painting these pieces. All right, real quick, I just gotta say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these people, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord channels where we talk about painting, 3D printing, and everything in between. And you'll also see all of my behind-the-scenes content of what I'm working on and get the opportunity to vote on some of the videos that I make. So, if you're interested, I'll put a link below for you. Other than that, let's get back to the video. Alright, so everything now is base coated, and I've got all of the main colors. So, I've got this nice gold, and I mean, I love how bright and shiny this thing is. Then I have my matte black primer, and that is for the cage or the interior frame. Then when it comes to the metallics, I really like how I mixed those two greens because I got like a nice emerald and I think it worked out real well. Then we've got our white and red shells and white button. Now, the one thing is, is I am going to be painting on the inside of these balls or these shells because when these things sit in here like this, you can actually see that you're going to see all of that. And I've got some plans for that when I get to this part. But right now, my big focus is going to be these little cages or the inside frame. And what I'm going to do is I am actually wanting to give a little more of a highlight inside this. Because I want these to be black, all of this, for these frames. Because it's going to look like it's like mirrors right here. But you can see like there's like these little ridges all the way around the whole frame. So it goes all the way on the inside of that ring. I want to give a little bit of a highlight to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take rub and buff and do all of the inside right here of all of that and make it really stand out because I want the inside of this to really just like pop. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take some of my masking tape and go ahead and mask all of this off and then get to the rub and buff. So here we go. So now I have the cages all masked off. So you can see we've got that nice line all the way across. And now we are ready for some rub and buff. Okay, so I'm going to be using this silver rub and buff. And I've got just a half inch spouncer. And this is just a sponge on a stick if you're unfamiliar. Then I also have my paper towel to get any of the excess off. Because I want this just to be a light like metal brush look. Now, the thing with rub and buff, I say this every single time I use it, a little bit goes a long way. So just use it in like very small amounts. And if you've never seen anything about rub and buff, I actually made a video about how I use it and I can put it right up here for you and you can check that video out too. But this stuff is awesome. So here we go. I'm just going to take a little bit. 
squeeze it out on my spouncer, cap that, and I'm just going to get this off. And there we go. So I'm just going to go in here and lightly brush this away just to get kind of this nice metallic look. Now, the key here is I'm not pressing super hard because I don't want it to get in the cracks of that black. So I'm just kind of going back and forth with that spouncer. And there we go. We can see that nice metallic look. Now, I want to get this just a little bit heavier because it's not getting fully on there. So I'm actually going to get some on the edges of this spouncer a little more. And I'm just really wiping it. I'm not even like actually squeezing the tube. So let's go with that. And I'm just gonna roll it a little bit to get some of that off. And now drag that across. And you can see we're just wiping it on there. There we go. All done with that. Real happy with that. Now, moving on to the next one. Now using a sponge is really great when you've got like deep cracks like this because it doesn't push in there. As long as you're not pushing super hard, it will just leave those cracks and the sponge just kind of goes right across it. Now when you use a brush, sometimes the brush can flick into the cracks, but this is just a flat surface. So it's literally just going along that flat surface and not getting in those cracks. So if you're really wanting to get in there, and you can use a brush, but if you want to avoid the cracks and get those dark kind of recesses, this is absolutely the way to go. Okay, I think we're good. Just gonna double check everything. All right, so that's it. So we're gonna just set this aside. Now I can just pretty much immediately take off all of this tape and we'll just peel that off while it sticks to my hand there. Got a nice metal look in there. So that just, it's one of those little tiny things that can just make it so much better. Devil's in the details, as they say. All right, look at that. So putting that in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Heck yeah. All right, so now we're done with this and we are just gonna set these cages aside here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take our shells and we're going to mask all the way around the shells and all of this because we don't want getting any paint on it. And what I'm going to be using on the inside of this is this mirror effect from Rust-Oleum. It is supposed to make it look like a mirror and we are going to find out. So I have a very nice, clean, smooth surface. So I am going to mask these off and then we're going to paint the inside of this. So. Here we go. Okay, so I got that edge and it's a very rough edge because remember, this is covering up a lot of that. So you're not gonna see it. Um, so when it comes to like right here, you're not, I've got to cut that out, but everything else, like you can see, you're not gonna see that in any way. So I'm only masking off the areas that really matter to me. Okay, so now I have that all masked out. And one of the things I like to do is I will just take some just regular old plastic wrap for like food and stuff. And I will wrap around all of this and then tape that off. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so we've got these all ready to go. Now, the one thing I will say, just like with the gold, when you're doing these types of metallic spray paints, very light coats, it is not going to look the greatest the very first pass. So you have to do multiple passes. So just light coats. So I'm just gonna be dusting this, letting it dry, and then come back and dust it again. And I'm just gonna keep doing that process till we have a mirror inside here. So let's go jump over to the spray booth and get this started. 
So as soon as I started seeing this silver mirror spray paint dry, I realized this was not going to be giving me the result I wanted. I applied a couple different coats and it just kept getting more of this frosty silver look. So I went ahead to the auto parts store and got this perfect match universal chrome spray paint, hoping that this was going to be a lot more shiny. So I went ahead and applied this to the Pokeball. And I did realize that, yes, this is a lot more shiny and more reflective, but it still just wasn't there. I really wanted something to look like chrome. So I went ahead and got these chrome paint markers. So I just popped the top off of this chrome paint marker. Then all I had to do was start pouring some of this inside the ball. And that's all I'm really doing here. I pour it in. Then, once I have it in, I just kind of like slosh it around, and that really was giving a really nice result. I really liked it. Now, here's my issue. After all of these failed attempts of having this like right, just the right type of chrome, I realized that all of these buildup of different types of metallics just is not helping my case. I mean, it does look great having it there, but... I should have just did this to the begin with. And that's where I should have done some tests because this chrome is a new thing and I've never really messed with chrome paints. But hindsight's 2020, and now I know that all I have to do is do this very last and also make sure it's the only thing I do, not building up layers of another type of paint. So I gave that chrome paint about 24 hours to actually dry. Then I decided to move forward with the lacquer, or the clear gloss top coat. And this is honestly the other mistake that I made, and I'll get into that in just a minute. So let's skip this part and let me explain what went wrong. So this is typically the spot where I say, okay, now all we gotta do is assemble this because everything looks great, but it doesn't. I messed this up probably the worst I possibly could. All of these are great. This shell, I mean, I messed this up bad, real bad. So you can see like all of these imperfections in here and all of these little spatters right there and I am not gonna let that fly. Even though it would still look pretty decent with all of this in there like that, like, I mean, it would look okay, but I am not happy with that. That is not what I wanted. I wanted this to look like mirrors and it's just not there. So the big thing here is I went about it the wrong way. And I was thinking that I could just put in this silver, then gloss coat everything, and everything's gonna be beautiful. But no. I should have saved the silver for the very last. This chrome coat marker should have been the very last thing I did, but it was like the second thing I did. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to sand away all of this like imperfections and also I, God, I hate that I'm having to show you all of this. Like with the actual gloss coat, it actually was beating up in a few areas and it got on too thick and I accidentally touched it and then got some gouges in it. Uh, so, I mean, this whole thing needs to be, like, scrapped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand all of this back down. Then I'm going to repaint the thing, and then do the gloss coat on everything. And I might even switch to the rattle can, because I don't like how the gloss coat was performing in my airbrush. So I've got a rattle can of gloss coat that I can do, too. Then what we're going to do is do the silver mirror again. And I'm showing you this big mistake just for this reason. Mistakes happen. In this hobby, when you're messing with stuff, I'm like, come on, I'm creating a Pokeball here. Of course I'm gonna screw up, and I'm fine with that. Don't get yourself down when you screw up things. Just look at the situation, see what you can do to improve it, and then do it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna, I've realized that my, my gloss coat is just nasty. It needs to be sanded back down. Then also this is kinda nasty and I need to sand this back down. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I don't care that it's painted, I'm gonna sand this sucker and we're gonna get this smooth again. So here we go. If you wanna skip ahead to the finished product, I'll put uh, skip mark chapters in there. 
So I'm going to be using a 400 grit to start with. All right, so I've got everything done now. I've got the Pokeball pretty much done. I just, now I have to assemble it. This project has been a colossal pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie. Because I've never used this chrome paint before. And I, I tell you what, if I would have just went with a metallic, I would have been done days ago. Because this stuff takes forever to dry. And I have already spent probably three days of it being not touching it, and it's still a little bit soft in places, and I'm going to have to be fine with that. Because I want to glue this together, and then I just won't be touching it. So you can see there are a few spots right here, and that's where this actually came down and touched. So I still should be pretty good. Now, the only thing I have to do now is glue all of this together. So what I'm going to do is I am going to glue these pieces together first, then I am going to move forward on getting the cage inside it. The one thing I already did was I had a magnet here and I put that magnet, I just press fitted it in there and it is not coming out. The other thing I have is a magnet that's going to have to go into here. And the other thing I have is there's a magnet that's going to fit in the hole of the button and then it's going to essentially just attach right there and close but I want to get some glue in this because this will come out if I just kind of put it in like that you can see it's going to fit beautifully but it will come out so I'm just gonna have to put some glue in that then I also have this little hinge and the hinge just slides in right there on these ends right here. So you can see how the hinge is going to work and it's going to look great. So let's go ahead and press fit these in and get these glued up. All right, so for the gluing, I'm going to be using this Gorilla Epoxy and it's just five minute epoxy. And what I'm going to do is use this in a little bit of a different way. All right, so what I'm going to do is first, there's this little clip here you gotta get rid of. And the nice thing is, is that little clip can also be used as a mixing stick. So I'm just going to pop this off. Now I'm just going to put some of this down on my little plastic failure here. So I'm just going to mix this real good. So now I'm just going to take my stir stick and I am going to start dropping some of this epoxy on certain areas. But first I'm going to focus on the cage and I'm going to start a timer so I know when my five minutes is up. So here we go. Okay, so I've got all of that around it. Now the moment of truth. This is where we're going to line this up. And get this set. All right, well, there's another thing I messed up on this thing. I mean, this, this project's the death of me. It's going to be the death of me. So there we go. You can see that I got a little too much glue right there. And I, you know, it is what it is. Not every single project is perfect. But, you know, I, I'm still trying my best. But now we're going to fix it on this one. We're not going to get as much glue. And I am going to just use this and really just kind of do the edge here. That way, I'm not putting too much glue on it. All right. 
Oh, moment of truth again. Here we go. All right, now I am going to get some of this on the exterior of this hinge. All right, while I've got my epoxy going here, I am going to just kind of slather some on here. All right, so I want to match this up. There we go. Same thing here. Just take the rest of this glue and just putting it on. And there we go. Got that. Now the last bit here, just gonna get some glue on here and just roll it in there. Then I wanna make sure I get the magnetization right, if that's even a word. So it's gotta go in like that. Oh. Okay, so now we have our red and blue. I'm going to allow this to set up a little longer. That way that hinge is gonna be good. Then we'll do the last part of the hinge and we will be done. There we go, there is the button. It is glued in now. So now we just let this dry and I will come back and we will glue in this last piece and we will be done, finally. All right, so here are the final results. Now, when it comes to the Pokeball as a whole, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it looks great. And those issues about using too much glue and having globs on it, it, it happens. And honestly, that chrome paint, I learned a lot, and I'm more happy about what I learned from making this project than the actual project itself, because I wanted that inside to look like a mirror. And just because of all of the sanding and stripping that I had to do, it doesn't look like a mirror. It's a little wavy and it's got some bumps in it because I just didn't sand it good enough. Now if I go back and do this again, I understand the steps that I need to take because I need to get everything set first when it comes to my paints and then do the chrome very last. I can't do it the other way around. Overall, I'm really happy with this thing because look at this, like, it's a Pokeball. It's going to set on a shelf like this. Not a lot of people are going to be opening this thing up and be like, oh man, Chris, you screwed that up. There's a glue spot. Or, oh, uh, that silver isn't beautiful and it's not a mirror finish. I'm like, well, shut up. Get out of my house. Who are you? That, that's what I would say. So, I don't know. And just remember, you are your own worst critic. Because you know all of those little things that you messed up. I know every single little issue with this thing. But when I've handed it to people so far, you know what they've said? Whoa, that looks so cool. Oh my god, I love it. This is Look at the mirror in there. They don't notice all of the little imperfections that I have on this thing. So, you know what? You just gotta let it go sometimes, and you gotta let yourself learn from those experiences. Because as long as you're learning, you are getting better. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and most of all, I hope you've enjoyed my failures, because I refuse to edit out my issues that I have with my stuff, because how can you learn from that? I know I've learned from it, and I don't want to be that person that just edits out everything and makes it look like I do things perfect every single time, because... Eh, if you really know me, I am not a perfect person. So, yeah. So let's go ahead and end this video. And this is where I say, hey, I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video right here. Have a good one.